ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Robert's Porch. I'm your host, Robert. All right. The NASCAR Xfinity Alsco Uniforms 250 from Hotlanta, 250 miles, 163 laps, three stages, 40, 40, and 83. Um, whoo, whoo, whoo. This hybrid mile and a half that Landon Motor Speedway's turned into. So we have the pack racing, the drafting, as we would at Talladega or Daytona. But we're on the mile and a half. So, and it's a narrow mile and a half. So everything happens so quick here. We've had, this will be the fourth race on this configuration. We've had some good races. We've had some okay races. But we've had some, it's been entertaining. So last year, or sorry, earlier this year, this is the first race, this is the first track in 2023 that we've gone back to now. So, stage one earlier in the year. Austin Hill, Sheldon Creed, a couple RCR teammates, followed by John Hunter, Chandler Smith, and Riley Herbs. Stage two is Parker Clearman, Riley Herbs, Brandon Jones, Sheldon Creed, Anthony Alfredo. The top ten was Austin Hill, Daniel Hamrick, Brian Truex, Parker Clearman, Riley Herbs, Brett Moffitt, Josh Berry, John Hunter Nemechek, Sam Mayer, and Justin Haley. Now, with this being the fourth race on this configuration of Atlanta, we're going to look at last year's two races. So, just the two races in 2022 at Hot Atlanta for the Xfinity Series. Austin Hill averaged 1.5 with a win. Riley Herbst, 6.5. Brandon Jones, 9.0. Sheldon Creed 10.5, Ryan Sieg 13.0, Jeff Burton 14.0, Anthony Alfredo 15.0, Jeffrey Earnhardt 16.0, Brett Moffat 17.0, Josh Berry 17.5, Ty Gibbs 18.0 with a win. Now, Ty Gibbs will be in the 19 for Joe Gibbs Racing, and Justin Haley will be in the 10 for College Racing, those two all star cars that are out there almost every week. All right, if you include the spring race this year with the last year's stats, three races, two wins by Austin Hill, average finish 1.3, Riley Herbst 6.0, Cole Custer was 12th in his only race, Brandon Jones 12.3, Ryan Sieg 12.3, Barrett Moffat 13.3, Sheldon Creed and Josh Berry each 14.0, Daniel Hemrick 14.0, Jeb Burton and Anthony Alfredo 14.6. Now, Daytona and Talladega, it's the style, it's the quickness, it's the pack racing, the big ones and all that. Of the last two years, we've had six races at Daytona and Talladega. Riley Harris averaged 11.0, Ryan Sieg 12.0, Austin Hill 12.5 and two wins, Jeb Burton 14.0 and a win, Justin Algar 14.3, Brandon Jones 16.6, .6, Josh Berry 17.7, .7, Sheldon Creed 19.0, Brett Moffat 21.2, and Jeff Earnhardt 22.6. The only reason that I bring up Daytona Talladega is because the package is a version of that Super Speedway package with the downforce and horsepower and everything. So it's like a modified version of that because it is the mile and a half and it is the hybrid mile and a half. So what I do when I do my picks, I do all, put all that stuff together and kind of figure out from there who I think is going to be able to, to go out and win this race. Alright, now let's take a look at points. After 16 races with 10 races left, we have, remember we have 12 playoff spots. We already have 7 taken up by winners. We got Austin Hill with 3 wins. We got John Hunter and Cole Custer each with 2. Justin Algar, Chandler Smith, Sammy Smith, and Jack Burton each with 1. Now, the last time we were on a super speedway, Talladega, Jeff Burton got the victory there. Now, we have Josh Berry, plus 81. We have Snag Mayer, plus 45. Shelly Creek, plus 42. Daniel Hemrick, plus 33. Riley Herbs, plus 26. Now, outside the top tw uh, 12, we have Parker Clearman, minus 26. Brett Moffitt, minus 68. Now, if you look at those two drivers, Parker Clearman won stage two last year, finished fourth in the race. Brett Moffitt finished sixth in the race. At Atlanta, Brett Moffitt's average 13.3. Um, let's see, I don't have Parker Clearman on here for the averages, but he again he finished fourth last year, won stage two. 
So both of those have cars capable of winning this race. Brandon Jones, 15th, minus 74. That's a Junior Motorsports car. I know Junior Motorsports has been off a little bit here in 2023. Some of that is because, if you remember, beginning of the year, it was a big deal. They took out some of the, uh, you know, the car almost dog tracked a little bit. And they kind of took skew. They took some of the skew out of the car and straightened them up a little bit. And that's made a difference, I think, with Junior Motorsports. Then we have Ryan Sieg minus 114, Parker Retzloff minus 128, and Kaz Grollo minus 137. Any of those drivers wins, it drops that cut line down and it adds another new driver. So I think we could get to 12 different winners in the Xfinity Series that are full time playoff eligible drivers. Alright, so the four picks. Gotta go with Austin Hill. I mean, big country, come on. What's not go with Big Country? He's already got two wins at Hollyanna. That boy can drive a race car. Follow up, uh, the next pick is John Harnimchak. He's got two wins on the air already. Again, uber talented in that Joe Gibbs number 20. Cole Custer in that double zero for Stuart Haas. Always runs well. Can run on road courses, can run on street courses. He can win any, anywhere. And then Justin Haley. He's in that number 10 call, like all star car. We know how good that car is. It's one with AJ Allmendinger, it's one with Kyle Larson. It can win with Justin Haley. Um, so far in 2023, I am 5-8 in the Truck Series, 9-7 in Xfinity, and 4-16 and in the Cup. Not great, but not horrible when you're talking about how fluid a NASCAR race could go. Um, so, But all right, those are the four picks. Austin Hill, John Henry Nuchak, Cole Custer, Justin Haley for the Outscale Uniforms, 250 from Hot Atlanta. As always, thanks for watching our sports show, and don't just have a great day. Have a spiffy day, Robert Sports Show, your YouTube leader, sports kind of content.